the Mind of Basketball Podcast, also known as MLB Podcast Playoff Edition. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast where we recap, break down, analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. Ja, Ja, Ja. How you feeling? Shoot. <laughs> A whole lot. What do you mean by a whole lot? I don't know. It's a mixture of both good and bad, mm. I guess. But yeah, that's it. Is it bad because the Clippers won? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you know, you know. I I I, I wish just I could listen. Just admit you're a hater. Just admit you're a hater. Oh, I, I'll give you this. Right, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. I ain't no flip flopper. Uh, you 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 might say otherwise, but I ain't no flip flopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I ain't flip flopping on this, but um, the way the Clippers are playing, man, uh, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. The way that they're playing, they they're playing with more. They're finally playing with that that surge that we know a talented team should play with. They are establishing why they are the talented team in the league right now. Well, not in the league, because that's the Nets. The Nets are the most talented team, but like, you know, they're just not currently. They're not, don't do that. Come on, man. Okay, okay, okay. My apologies. My apologies. But I still got Utah in seven. That's fine. That's fine. But I have to admit that they they do look like they playing with that more of that urgency, that insurance urgency, knowing that that is either championship or bust for them. Oh, so playing like the way they should have been playing. Yes, exactly. Throughout the entirety of the playoffs. Yes, exactly. Yeah. These are your Clippers. <laughs> Getting the job done when they needed to. Must yeah. win game. Need this home sweep. Otherwise, you go back to Utah down 3-1. That's not yeah. That wouldn't be good. And no. yeah, from from start to finish, this was their game. Yeah, I mean they just had it. And I said Paul George it looked like he got that confidence back from last game, and it continued on in this game. Playoff peak, two consecutive Superstar. games. Superstar. Let's not go that far. Two consecutive games. <laughs> let's let's hold on that. Let's hold on that. <laughs> okay, okay. But two consecutive games, he balled out. Yeah. Hell yeah, yes, he has, man. He has, again, he has showed why he used to be a superstar in this league and why he's going to continue to be a superstar in this league with those two games, with those two great dominant performances in both game three and game four. And, man, did he have a cooking, especially early on, man. Just know, whoever tried to guard him on Utah, it was no chance in heaven nor hell. Well, yeah, um, and the same goes for his partner, Kawhi, superstar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the real superstar of the team. Um, yeah. And he, just like Paul George, balled out. I mean, they both had the same amount of points. They had 31. And Kawhi, yeah. being Kawhi, um, just taking this game and <laughs> taking Derek Favors head. Um, <laughs> please stop, please. please. That's what he did. At, that's what he did after what he did to favors. He went, <laughs> No, he gave him a Kawhi stare down, which is just a blank face. <laughs> just looked at him with a blank face. <laughs> I gotta roll back to footage on that. He just ended him. <laughs> he just ended him. I thought Maxi Cleaver was bad. Now that one was bad. And luckily, nobody just stared at. Luckily, Paul George and Marcus Morris were instead um were besides him to stare at him again. You remember? Yeah, but this one was worse because it was a jazz player staring at favors. <laughs> oh, Donovan Mitchell was just looking at him like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, that was that was bad. That was bad. That basically summarized this game. 
yeah. and summarize the Jazz performance because they just had a rough start in the beginning. And that basically continued on for the rest of the game. Um, even though they got, it, you know, offensively got a little bit together down the stretch, like Donovan Mitchell, because he was struggling at first, but he was able to attack and get a lot of free throws. That's why he had um, 37 in the night, but he struggled in terms of um, field goal percentage. And it was a lot of it in that early part of the game. And that was when the Clippers basically went on that. Um, tear. Yeah, yeah that, that tear, which eventually led to that win because it was a tear from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, he tried, but yeah, it, 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 he, and he got, he was going to get his, he was going to find a way to get his, whether it was free throw line or not, but. Yeah, it, it just wasn't a great performance for him. And he's come back from off the ankle, I believe, was it? Yes, was yes. Ankle injury. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was, he was. I guess you give him that excuse. Um, yeah, uh, that's a little bit of an excuse. I'm, uh, a mini excuse, that's not. Yeah, a mini excuse. I mean, the rest of the Jazz players struggled as well in the beginning. Um, when the Clippers went on that tear, Bogdanovich was struggling, Rudy Gobert was struggling, Jordan Clarkson struggled all throughout the game yeah i mean yeah it wasn't looking pretty for for clarkson i mean that's six man of the year so i mean that you can't that can't happen well yeah that can't happen but hey that whole that whole jazz team the way they struggle cannot happen you know what i mean um because you they look kind of vulnerable for the first time in these players going against in this game they look really vulnerable in the playoffs, like you know, they look like their backs were against the wall. They look like somebody just tried to take the life out of them for a second. You know, they didn't play with that type of energy. Like you know, Rudy Bo- Gobert had like three fouls in the second quarter, I believe, by the second quarter, things like that. And like you know, the team just couldn't get a rhythm going. And especially when your stars like you know, hunting for baskets and having to draw fouls, like you know, it's like you know. It's kind of a tough night. It is a tough night. Even kind of, it is. Yep, it was a very tough night for Utah. A very tough night, struggling all throughout, for the most part. Um, couldn't really play defense because the Clippers were just tearing them up. Exactly. Um, on their offensive side of the ball, we already mentioned Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris. Had his best game of this playoff. Actually, no, best his best game was game seven against Dallas. But um, second best game of his playoffs. And he's been struggling. But when he does play well, it benefits his team so much. Yeah. Even looking back into the regular season, when I've, there was like a stat that showed like when he had 20, the Clippers mm-hmm. won majority of the time. Yeah. He's a, he's a valuable asset to this team. So he needs to continue with this. He needs to continue putting up buckets and hitting his shots and getting into his his rhythm. No question. No question, yes. I also want to give credit to Clippers defense. I mean, they just really – they just took – they took it. Yeah. They just took it from the Jazz. Jazz didn't know what to do. They had no answer. Um, They couldn't stop the Clippers. And that was basically the tone for the rest of the game. Yeah. So yeah, LA our way. <laughs> As the Los Angeles Clippers get the big win, get the home sweep, and tie this series up two to two. Going back to Utah for a pivotal game five. Speaking of hoping to tie the series up two to two, that coach. And that man, Nate McMillan and Trey Young's Atlanta Hawks looking to tie the series up against Philly. And, well, um, makes it a lot easier when Embiid is playing like the way he was playing. Makes it yeah, a lot but, easier. Yeah, Embiid, Embiid kind of let himself go a little bit in this game. Like, he really, really let himself go. But, hey, let's be honest, they, they still had a great lead. Though, despite the fact that Embiid yes. was playing like that, you know what I mean? That's because, up, of, yeah. They were up 18, just to say. They yeah. were up 18 in the second quarter. Yeah. Late in the second that's, quarter. 
And that's all because of the fact that they remain to their game plan of, of shooting. You know what I mean? And it, 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 that's the only way, to be honest. <laughs> like, like, you know, like that's, the, that's the only way. But, yeah, um, and B did not have a particularly great game. And it, it did not get better for him at any point down the stretch, especially when the opposing team started to make their run in that third. Yeah. Um. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Embiid, I don't think he had a single field goal in the second half. Mm. No. He tried to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he no. tried. And we, he tried. Well, we'll get to that uh, in a little bit. Um, But, yeah, as you mentioned, everybody else, yeah, they are. everybody else for the Sixers, though, that was mm-hmm. playing great. Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Cork Maz, I mean, Dwight Howard. I mean, they was playing yeah. great. They were stepping up in the role um, for Embiid um, in that second half. Because yeah. Embiid, yeah, that second half was really brutal for him. I mean, speaking of struggling on the opposite side, the Hawk star, Trey Young, was struggling offensively as well. Well, mainly struggling in terms of scoring. But um, as we saw, it's definitely in that second half, his playmaking ability, the more that I watch him in these playoffs, the more that I really see how well of a playmaker he is. Yeah. Like, yeah. he is just tremendous when he has the ball in his hands. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, he's, one of the, he's one of the best in, um, in company to do it when it comes to playmaking and um, having an impact on his team from that aspect of the game. You know, because again, the, this Hawks team don't get anywhere without his leadership. Mm-hmm. Without him being that common floor general, getting everybody into position and everything and stuff like that. And you can see that that's what Trey Young, outside of scoring, of course, that's what he specializes in too. Like that's his secondary specialization or mm. what you, or how it was supposed to be called, to be honest. But yeah, no, I, I was just saying. But um, a big reason why the Sixers had this lead was because his struggles scoring. Also, the Hawks struggles shooting a three. I mean, Trey was like, I think, a three for 11. Yeah. Um, Bondanovich was cold from deep. Gallinari was cold. Like, and this is so important for this Hawks team. So when they don't have it going from deep, the then problem. you don't have, yeah, it's a problem. Well, it wasn't a problem in the third quarter. That's all I can say to you, sir. <laughs> nope. You want to elaborate on that? <laughs> Oh, yeah, man, the third quarter hit that, all you know, Lou Wilville, a.k.a. Lemon Pepper Lou, started hitting some big time <laughs> Bogdanovich started to eventually get it going. You got Herter right there. Like, you know, this uh, the, 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 the flow and the energy of the offense for that Hawks team start to click more as they got out that second half, out that second half um, situation. And you clearly see it, um, John Collins, you know, Yes, it, he was big time. It, yeah, he was big time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the team just started flowing better from three. And then as a result, they started to make their way from being down 18. They started, which 18 is that, again, 18 might seem like a lot, but in today's NBA, that's not, uh, that, that, that's, 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 that's enough. It's crazy. Exactly. That's Especially enough. at halftime or nearing halftime. That's not, yeah. that's not a lot. Exactly. They said, let me say something. That's not enough to secure a win. We still a lot of time left. We ain't down by 40. We can get back into this game. And that's what the Hawks did. They 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 they, they got better. They just got better. They stayed, they stayed humble and their defense got better. Their defense got and better playing against the Sixers team. Where you see again when and beat having already a struggling game. <laughs> They just had to try to find a way to um to to limit the threes, and that's what they basically did. Mm-hmm. Yep, limited threes. Also, the Hawks. I mean, they they won the turnover um game. They only had four. Sixers had twelve. Yeah, and some of those turnovers came in crucial moments um when the Hawks were trying to make their run. Yeah, in that second half. So yeah, Atlanta's defense was great. Um, in that second half, specifically every time they try to make a run, and then they capitalize offensively yeah. after that. But yeah, I mean, this game, they came down to the wire. 
because even though MB was struggling mightily, as we mentioned, all the other guys stepped up. Yeah. And Trey Young's playmaking ability helped this Atlanta Hawks team get back to the game along with the shooters, finally get it going in that second half. Yeah. Like I said, it came down to the wire. The Hawks were up by one. Even though he didn't hit a field goal, he is the best player. You know you got to go to him. A nice play. Ben Simmons hits him. He has a good layup, and he just misses. He just I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I want to find try to find a way to dunk that. <laughs> I want to try to find a way to dunk that because, like, man, when he did that, I thought that was really going in because he created enough space and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he had a great look. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a great look to go inside for a game for a potentially game winning basket. And him, it was like 2019 all over again, huh? It wasn't 2019 all over again. Okay, yeah, you right. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll have to but, we'll have to wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um the thing is but yeah, he it looked like he has a good look. You think it's going in, and then all you know, it goes over the rim, or or it hits the rim. I don't remember, but then all I know, Ben Simmons fights for the ball, but then he knocks it out of bounds while trying to get it to secure it back. And it gave the Hawks a uh, opportunity to just let out a big puff of worry, guys. Yep, unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, as we mentioned, when your star player. Listen, so many times when your star player, especially in these situations, like I was saying, when your best player is not playing well, mm-hmm. it is very, very rare, especially in these situations and playoff games, that you are going to win the game. Yeah. Very rare. Especially when you rely on him so much for your offense, like they rely on and beat so much for their offense. He needs to score. Yeah. And in big moments in that second half, especially, it's not like you went cold in the first half and then got better in the second half. No, you went cold in the second half. Exactly. That that you're not gonna you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win. No, not at all. Not at all. And hey, sometimes these things like this happens to stars or superstars. If we want to talk about the difference between that in this case, but I don't expect MB to have another game like this. Not twice in a row. Not twice in a row. It's impossible. His skill set is impossible for him to have uh, two bad games in a row. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I agree. Um, but continue on with this game. Trey Young hit both free throws on the upside. Sixers had another chance. Set up play for Seth Curry. Tough. Shot had to double clutch it. Two yeah. got one guy in front of him, one guy behind him hits the rim, but he's off. And as a result, the Atlanta Hawks tie up this series two to two. Surprise, but they welcome them. Well, they did say see you in the A. Well, they said that against the Knicks, bro. Yeah, and but and the Sixers they get they split, so I mean. You know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's looking kind of dimming them as as dominant as they are. They could potentially get beat. But any team in the playoffs could potentially get beat. Nonetheless, it only is it's tied. It's tied. Yeah. You know? And Sixers technically did. The point is you got to do your job in terms of these series and the job is to steal a game at home at yeah. their home and that's what they Sixers did. did that yeah so now it's their job to get this game in their home floor to get the advantage and the hawks is their job to obviously steal it because it's game five probably yeah. the biggest game of any series when it's tied exactly so here we go hawks take the win Going back to Philly, tie the series. Let's see if MB can bounce back. And after all, we gotta mention MB is playing with an injury. Yes, yes he is. Yes, he is. And that is well known in the document. Yep. Oh yeah. Um. 
Speaking of, actually, before we even get to that, news, 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 news. There has been some awards that has Again? been given out. More awards? Well, awards in terms of um, Group? NBA All. You know. Okay. Yeah. So let's get through this unless Jaws Connection just goes out again. Um, NBA All Defensive Teams have been announced the first and second defensive team of this year. Let's get into it. First, the first team, Rudy Gobert, Ben Simmons, Draymond Green, Giannis, and Drew Holiday. Thoughts on that? Uh, in terms of defense, no, nah, I don't have no problem with it, no. Nah. Oh, me either. Rudy Gobert and Ben Simmons all got a hundred first place votes. Well, that, well, that's great, but you know who shot got first place votes in terms of defensive play of the year? Nothing. No one. Who is he gonna say? Ben. <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Tell Ben can't block a shot like Rudy. <laughs> and Rudy couldn't block no shots last night. Um, second team. <laughs> second team wow. features Bam, Jimmy, Joel Embiid, Tia Stiebel, and Kawhi Leonard. Thoughts on the second team? I can't go against that either. That's a good list, also. Yep, that's a good list. Um, surprisingly. For Jimmy, even though you know, friend Forbes, but uh, that's <laughs> only said that for you. Only said that for you. That's the only yeah, time I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only I'm time I'm gonna say. I'm the only time I'm gonna say. Hey, okay. only time I'm gonna say. Hey, hey, say it. Leave him alone, man. Well, I could bring it back up if you want. A dude named. We good. Brady. We good. We good. We good. But yeah, I, I, I think that these are great teams. Um, we love to see Miles turn on here, but unfortunately, injury kind of set that back. Yeah. Um, but in terms of defense, I'm trying to think of anybody else. Not Pat Bev, he just be running around. Nonetheless, I mean, yeah, this is a great this is a great list. This is a great list. I have no complaints about it. You no complaints at all. All right, maybe if any complaints, maybe swap Bam and Giannis. Because I think Bam deserved a lot for um Defensive Player of the Year, which he kind of got snubbed for um the nomination. Yeah. Um, I understand. He was fourth. So maybe I think he should have been first team over Giannis, but I don't think that's a big complaint. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Those are the NBA all-defensive teams of this season. Now let's get into the predictions for tonight's set of games. Let's is big only or not not tonight's set of games but tonight's game as it is a big one it is game five series tied 2-2 8 30 on tnc with the bucks getting the big win in milwaukee they look to steal this series away from the brooklyn nets in the barclays center in this game Five and this is a big game five for the Nets because it's been announced Kyrie Irving will be out for this game and James Harden will also be out again and in this game. Who do you have two of their stars missing in Brooklyn? Well, if people want to say that, in my opinion, I'm going to choose the Nets and I'll tell you why. Because of personally, because of one man, and I think you know who that one man is. It's been yeah, years of green. green. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we need Uncle beast. Jeff. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we need Uncle Jeff from, from Boston days back. I mean, like you know, but there's somebody on that team, not 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 Jeff Green, and and, and not Steve Nash. Well, actually, Steve Nash has come back to suit up and play actually. So. You may see that for the first time ever since since LeBron. Yeah. See, Nash gonna get a chip one way or another. 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's going to get a chip in one way or another. But speaking of Braun, is the guy on the team who has been the proclaimed best player in the world for past two seasons now. Like, he surpassed Braun in it. For me, if he wants to have that kind of solidification as the best player in the game, this is where the game, you got to try to will your team. I seen LeBron do it. Let me see you do it now. He ain't no LeBron now. I'm not disrespecting him because he's great in his own class. But people are saying that you're the best player. Let's see what you're going to do. Interesting, interesting. And by the way, guys, he was talking about Kevin Durant, not Mike James. Uh, I mean, I, I understand. I understand. If Kevin Durant does have an amazing performance, yes, they can take this game. Mm-hmm. However, I mean, he's their main offensive threat now. Kevin yeah. Durant isn't a playmaker. Like, even like Kyrie Irving is, even though Kyrie's not the greatest of playmakers, he can't play me. Yeah. Well, he's a point guard. I hope and yeah. pray he can make. <laughs> but no, Kyrie's scoring first. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, that's his number one and number two option. You know, passing is kind of number three to him. Yeah. But he can be a good playmaker. And James Harden, we all know how good of a playmaker he is. Kevin Durant's not really that. He never really has been. Well, he better be this game. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't think he's going to. And unless he drops 60, I got the Bucks. I think they're going to need those guys. Um, Like, they're going to need Kyrie and James because the Bucks have a lot of firepower yeah. on their disposal, unless they just randomly go cold, Yeah, which they have early in this series. But they have great three-point shooters. They have shot creators. They have playmakers. And they have Giannis. I think that, that's all that needs to be said, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, the Nets are going to need big performance of Kevin Durant or a great performance from him and a big performance from the rest of the guys. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen. So, yeah, I got the Bucks taking this game. But it's a big game. It's a big game. <sighs> I love the unpredictability. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but all right. Um, I think it's time, time, time to wrap things up. Uh, any final thoughts? To L.A. Our way. <laughs> L.A. Our way. <laughs> Buffalo is coming their way. What is your vibe with Buffalo? My fault. It's their franchise I'm report. Telling, people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I know they don't know that. That's the reason I need you to go do their research. That's but hey, I'm just... all right. San Diego, happy? What? San Diego. It's not going to be LA anymore. It's going to be San Diego their way. They ain't going to cheer for them. They ain't cheer for the Chargers. Don't do that, man. Come on. <laughs> football knowledge there but um uh my final thoughts um it's gonna be a big interesting game tonight yeah no question change the course of this series if the bucks win it's crazy man the the nets would look at so lethal and then oh you know injuries their biggest their biggest problem yeah their biggest problem that's their biggest threat their number one threat they don't make it to the finals, if they don't win the championship, I think that'll be the reason why. Yeah. Most definitely. It has to be the only reason why. Outside of that, there should be no other reason why they're not in the finals. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. But uh, big game five, I can't wait for it. I'm watching every second of it, as you should be doing as well. But for now... Thank you guys for watching today's podcast. Make sure to turn it to tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, support channel, give us feedback, all that good stuff. And also follow IG and our TikTok down in the description below. Yes, and of course, once again, I'm Evan. I'm Juju.
I'm Ja. And this is my basketball podcast. Playoff edition. Ethernet cable edition. Please, for the love of God.